Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website, mographplus.com, and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1,030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorials on V-Ray. Now, let's get started with this video tutorial. In this lesson, we learn about V-Ray lens effects, which is available via V-Ray frame buffer, and it allows you to simulate camera effects like bloom and glare. Uh, to achieve these lens effects, before you start the render, you need to open up the frame buffer. Here you can enable lens effect setting by activating it here. Make sure to enable both bloom and glare effects. Also, another pre-render things you need to do is to enable the intensity for both bloom and glare mask in case you need to use it. And in a moment we learn what uh, intensity is doing. And now you can start the render. As the lens effects are applied after the render and they are a post effect basically, you wouldn't need to render the whole scene just to adjust different bloom or glare parameters again. Uh, you can go ahead and render your scene and after the render is finished, you are going to be able to see and adjust the lens effects. Here is our render. For now, let's turn off glare effects and focus on bloom. Let me just disable intensity so we can see the effect a bit better. You can turn on and off the bloom lens effects here. Uh, fill edges if enabled will remove the darkening around the edges of the image. We have mode which specifies to what the effect will be applied. By default it's set to image and in this mode the effect will be applied uh, to the beauty or RGB color pass only. If set to image and render element the effect will be applied to the RGB pass but the effect will also be stored in a render element called bloom. And if set to render element only, the effect won't be applied to the RGB color pass and it will only be stored in the bloom render element. And you can use this pass in post to produce the same effect. For now, let's set it to image only. Weight is basically the strength of the bloom lens effect. Let's try 0, 20, 40, 16, 80, and 100. For now, let's set it to 40. And size specifies the size of the filter as percentage of the image width. Let's try 0, 5, 10, 20, and 40. Let's leave it at 20 for now. And shape controls the fall off of the effect. Let's see 1, 5, 10, 20, and 40. For now, let's set the weight to 100 and size to 20. And we get this blurry result because the bloom effect has been applied everywhere. In the bloom mask section, we can define where the effect is going to be applied. Let's turn on intensity and set it to 5. When this option is enabled, the bloom effect will be applied only around pixels that have a value larger than the number specified in the field to the right. Now, as you can see, the effect is only applied to the filament of the bulb. And if you enable object ID and material ID, the effect will only be applied to the objects or the materials with the specified IDs. Let's disable bloom completely for now and enable glare. Also, let's disable intensity for now and zoom in around these bulbs a bit. In the type rollout, you can define how the glare effect is computed. By default, it's set to from render camera. In this case, the necessary parameters like F number and the number of blades 
uh, are taken from the camera used to perform the rendering and automatically generates the filter kernel. We have glare type from camera parameters which takes the camera parameters specified in the Vera Lens Effects render effect itself and automatically generates the filter kernel. Now in this glare type, we can control the F number, the number of blades and the blades rotation in the camera's parameters section down here. If I set the F number to something like two, we get a weaker glare effect. And if set to eight, we get a stronger effect. So basically a larger F number will produce stronger glare lens effects. Now, let's set the number of blades to 3, 4, 5, and 6. For now, I think we can use 4. And you can rotate the blades if you want to, maybe rotate them by 20 degrees here. And finally, we have from image, which takes the image specified in glare image as filter kernel. We can produce these filters using VR Lens Effects Filter Generator. You can find the filter generator in the tools folder of your VR installation. And the, here we go, I'm gonna open it up here. And the interface is very easy to use. In the upper section, you have the individual components to adjust in four different tabs. And in the lower section, you can see the final mixed result of all of those elements, basically. Let's create a simple filter here. In the radially symmetric pattern tab, set the value to 15. I'm not gonna change anything in the Corona flare lines tab. In the special flare tab, let's use six uh, ray pattern and let's rotate it by 13 degrees. And in the lower section, make sure to enable apply special flare pattern. And in the halo tab, set the inner radius to 41 and outer radius to 86 maybe and increase the halo to something like 100. Now from the file menu, press export HDR, use maybe 300 by 300 as the dimension, press OK, and in this case, I'm gonna save it to the image folder of the project files as glarefilter01.hdri. Now back in 3ds Max, we can load this filter and as you can see, if you just select it and load it, it basically controls the look of the glare. Let me set the weight to 100 and size to 10 so we can see the exact filter a bit better. Weight specifies the strength of the glare effect. 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. And size specifies the size of the filter as percentage of the image width. Let's try 2, 10, 20, and 40. For now, change the type to from camera parameters and set the weight to 60 and size to 20. We have turn on diffraction and when enabled, this produces colored patterns in the glare. As I'm enabling and disabling it, you can see how it affects and basically diffracts the light. And we have used obstacle image, which allows you to draw the aperture shape as well as any dirt or scratches on the lens, which will affect the glare. And in the glare mask, you can define where the glare will be applied based on the intensity, object ID, or material ID. And finally, in the update control section, you can define whether to interactively see the changes you apply using these parameters or see them manually each time if you disable this value. And finally, let's make sure intensity is disabled, set the weight to 80 and size to five. I mean, uh, we can disable bloom, but for here, let's maybe enable it, set the weight to 50, size to five and maybe shape to four. Make sure intensity mask is disabled 
and here is our bloomy, glary image. I think we can even disable bloom, which is what I'm going to do for this final render, which was done in a high resolution. And this is the final render. Maybe we can adjust it, but I'm going to let you do that on your own. Okay, in this lesson, we learn about VR lens effects, and I think we are done with uh, camera section. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, check my outline out and see if there is anything uh, remain to discuss for this section. And if not, I'm gonna see you in the next section. And if there is anything to talk about, I'm gonna see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorial. See you next time guys.